So we're going to talk today about the law of relationships, or as I call, real relationships. Uh, a couple more points for me. I've been doing this for about 30 plus years. I started out in traditional advertising, moved into marketing. I've done like every role under the sun in advertising, sales, and marketing in 30 years. Um, I'm president, of C president and CEO of an agency called Gilbert Direct Marketing Inc. We specialize in direct, digital, and social media marketing. Um, also the president of the Florida Direct Marketing Association, which is one of the oldest and most uh, well-known uh, marketing trade and networking organizations in the state of Florida. And I used to be a marketing prof professor, uh, which was actually the most fun job, but I got just too busy to do all of that. I write for Target Marketing Group. I've been writing for them since 2006. Uh, a column called Return on Intelligence, which I love the title. Um, and anyway, so if you guys are tweeting today, SNS15 is the hashtag for the event. Um, I haven't seen it trending yet today on Twitter, but we're a small but mighty crew. Let's, let's tweet and get us twen twenty trending, please. Um, if you're going to tweet about this, uh, my speech, it's uh, Nine Immutable Laws. And if you want to follow me, it's at Gilbert Direct. Okay, that's that. So orientation. Every presentation I do, and I do probably one a month for like the last five years, um, I always put this out there. Because this is kind of the, the mantra that I, and the motto that I run my business on. And it goes a little bit like this. There's only one valid definition of business purpose to create a customer. Um, companies are not in business to make things, but they are in business to make customers. This is kind of my guiding social media principle and my guiding marketing principle. Anybody know who said that? Okay. Anybody here, Peter Drucker? Uh, you've probably all studied him in school. One of the best minds in you know, the business field. By the way, I'm going to go fast. It's just, I'm from New York. We speak fast. I hope you guys don't mind. Feel free to, you know, say, Jim, stop, repeat what you said, whatever. Um, so, this is the formula for social media success. <laughs> Let's just, make, just get that down. Okay, well, actually, the formula is about engagement. Um, so, I've been doing, I've been deeply, deeply entrenched in the social media business now since 2008. And in 2009, I went to work for a company called The Fresh Diet, which was a regional meal delivery diet company, kind of like Nutrisystems, but, you know, real whole foods, some of it organic, really good stuff, hand delivered to people's doors. I'm not going to do an infomercial for them. I don't work for them anymore. But I just tell you this because this is where the whole social thing really took off for me in 2009. Um, from that, I created a presentation because I wanted to get my ideas out there and called it the Nine Immutable Laws of Social Media Marketing, which was, to me, an opportunity to present what I was learning about social back in, you know, five, six years ago was really kind of the infancy. Facebook pages for business were just getting started. Twitter was out there, but people were learning how to use it, really. There was no Instagram. There was no Vine. There was you know, none of that other stuff. But it was really, you know, really about Twitter and Facebook back then. Um, it's a lot about that for me too now, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so this presentation is a cut down version of a larger two hour presentation. So if you guys want to send me an email, tweet to me or something like that, I'll send you the long version, which got Tons more examples, but I only have an hour to do this thing in. 54 minutes, um, actually. Actually, at this point, I got 40 minutes. Uh, so if you want a copy of it, feel free, and I will get it to you. Uh, I've done this presentation for about 4,000 people live. About 85,000 people have viewed my slides on SlideShare. Um, so it's been around, and it's been around since 2009. And as you know, 2009 to now, tons of changes out there. It's like not even the same business anymore. So let's just go really through fast. I've condensed down the nine immutable laws of social media marketing into some pithy statements that you can remember. And then we're going to take it a step further to what I call the 10th immutable law, the 10th and final immutable law. So number one, the deeper the level of engagement, the deeper the trust and bond is with your company, right? If you don't 
get anywhere if somebody's engaged. And I know this is a basic, basic tenet of everything that we do, but engagement is everything in this business. Nothing happens without engagement. And as I'm saying this, I want you guys to think about your clients, uh, your customers, and how engaged they are with you and your own social media and kind of take what I'm saying and I'll give you some examples from some industries including a lot about the fresh diet because it's just so much stuff that resonates from there. Um, and kind of map what I'm saying onto your own business and your own clients so you know you get the best takeaways from this, okay? So number two, brand plus channels equals engagement and you know if somebody follows you in more channels, the more likely they are to be engaged in your, with you and your brand, right? Um, this is kind of a new marketing paradigm and it draws all of the laws of engagement. Um, and this really comes from the catalog industry where back in the day when I was a catalog marketer like Jono's, the more <clears throat> channels a customer interacted with you, whether they were calling your call center, looking at your website, uh, the more channels, the more likely you were to have a longer lifetime customer value. They would spend more money over time and the company would make more profits. So that comes right from there. So rule not, law number three, brand plus time plus channels equals advocate. Think about it. Time, channels, more advocacy. Moving on. Number four is the exponential search factor. Social increases uh, your chances of getting found. It increases your SEO, it increases results that come to you. It's kind of a duh thing, but I always bring that out there just in case. Um, number five, the newfangled customer service factor. And I can't stress this one enough because in this customer service, in, in this world, in this socially driven world, if you're not delivering, you're gonna die. If people respond to you and you don't respond to them or they send you a message and you don't respond to them, you're, gonna, you're in a lot of trouble. And the bottom line is if you've got companies, if you've got customers who are tweeting to you about issues or posting messages on Facebook or posting to your wall, I'll use that word, um, and you don't handle it immediately, you risk losing, not only do you risk losing the customer, but everybody who sees that is going to get a brand, negative brand impression. We'll talk more about that in a second. Of course, customers choose their contact preferences. These days, most companies don't have a phone to call. I, I, I went nuts the other night trying to call Spirit Airlines because I wanted to ask a stupid question and I, I couldn't get through to them. So finally I got just frustrated. I went to their website and I posted something and then I tweeted something at them. If you don't respond immediately, all of those channels are gonna get involved, okay? And the other thing about social customer service is everybody in your company, in your brand, in your organization needs to get involved in it, okay? Bottom line is from the CEO on down, everybody's gotta be monitoring and making sure that they get it Handled, as I say, handle it or else. Um, number six, the behind the scenes factor. Uh, people don't like to buy from brands, they like to buy from people. So the more, and we've been doing this since early on in social, the more you humanize your brand, the more you brand all the people, and I got some examples towards the end of the presentation, the more you turn people into human beings, the more likely they are to respond. Um, people buy from people, not brands, gotcha. Okay, so next one, trust is the new black. Um, when I do social media, like as I stand here today, I speak in a real voice. You won't hear, you know, six million dollar words out of my mouth. You won't hear me doing MBA speak, okay? I speak to you exactly the same way that you know, a guy on the street would be telling you, I say it straight, I say it plain. When you develop your social media voice, use who you are to your benefit. Because you have to, I used to have a professor who said, if you're speaking to a horse, a horse talk in horse language. So talk to your customers and clients 
in a way that makes sense for them. I'm always seeing B2B ads, they drive me crazy because they're always talking about this widget and that widget and it's like B2B marketing ads always have to use like the highest level language. You ever see that? They, 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 they have to speak to you on an adult level because they can't just speak, speak to you direct and say, these are the features, these are the benefits. This is what you're gonna get from it. They have to use all the big fancy you know, words. So speak in a real voice. Um, other ways to build trust, freebies we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk more about contests in a minute. The, the whole social media concept to me is really a backlash from the digital world that we've created in the last number of years. In other words, we went from being a very in-person type of world where you would go to the corner store and the owner of that store would know who you are, know your preferences, say get your, can get your hand away from the candy you know, that kind of thing. And now it's kind of going back the other way where social media, if done right, can bring you that corner store feel, can communicate and engage with people and take some of the in-person in -personal aspects away from it. So all of these things are about in creating trust. Um, number eight, the online reputation factor. Uh, your reputation is everything, right? If you have a negative, if you have a ding on your reputation, you gotta work hard to fix that. The goal is to keep it from getting that, uh, getting that way in advance. Social media, the great neutralizer, literally. If your brand is not buttoned up, if you don't have your brand promise, your customer service, and your products don't match up with what you're saying through your marketing and how you're speaking, you risk getting skewered via social. So it's very important to man monitor and maintain your social media presence uh, and your reputation. Um, so number nine really sums it up. Engagement plus time plus trust equals revenue. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So these are how all nine laws work together. So I was looking for something, some way, some overarching philosophy when I built this latest presentation that said, well, how do we take all these nine laws and what do we need, what's missing from them? What do we do to put them in action? And um, the bottom line was what's missing is real relationships. We, we seem to have lost some of our ability to get real. Uh, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a minute. So why get real engagement now? Much tougher. You know, there's, you have to literally work harder to get it done. Um, everybody, more people are doing it, from really good people doing it to really bad people doing it. Um, and, you know, just putting out all of this incredible message clutter. It's like advertising was back in the day. You used to get bombarded by thousands of messages between TV and radio and print and all of that stuff. So much clutter that you had to break through the clutter. Now you need to break through the clutter of social media. Um, Facebook, pay for play. Um, you know, now you put up a post and one to two percent of people actually see your post until you boost it and spend money on it. Um, and of course there's more, more sites that, you know, you've got Periscope, you've got Vine, you've got Instagram, you've got Tons more, I mean, what is the next social, big social media thing? So you've got all of this stuff going on, this confluence of things happening in the social media world that makes it just harder and harder for all of us to do our jobs. Um, but the goals as social media marketers are still absolutely the same. Engage, as we've spoken about. Draw people out to get them engaged. Get them involved in your company, your brand. Um, via doing it really, you know, doing social media really well. Um, become a thought leader. Who here doesn't want to be a thought leader? Okay. Um, generate authority. You want to build credibility and legitimacy for your business, and social is an amazing way to do it. Um, tug at people's heartstrings. How many of you guys use social to drive emotional reaction and connections with your clients? Bueller, Bueller. Okay, we got two. All right, awesome, thank you. Um, tell a story. 
Storytelling via social is an amazing thing. I'll tell you more. I got a couple of good examples of storytelling coming up. Create drama. As you guys can tell, I, I'm kind of a dramatic guy. I've got this big, gregarious personality. I love to create drama via social. I got a couple of examples of that in a minute. So we now have to work even harder. So we're gonna talk about how we're gonna do this now. So let's talk about what I call the eight stages of, it used to be engagement, but now it's real reality. Okay, let me just pull this up real quick. Okay, so you guys, when you think about social media and how engaged your fans and your clients are in your social, I have a scale of eight. You might have a scale of two, you might have a scale of 20, it doesn't matter. This is just kind of a context. So the first one is a brand impression. Somebody who they may have seen something retweeted by your company or retweeted by you. They may have seen a Facebook post. They may have seen something on, in, a, somebody tagged on something. They really know very little about your brand and who you are. But there's something that gets, kind of gets sparked in there and they have an interest so they'll like you or follow you, whatever. But that is the first stage. Now the goal here is to move people all the way up to stage six and then we'll talk about seven and eight in a minute. Then you have the like, which is just somebody who's a casual, casual listener. They're, in my opinion, looking for an opportunity to get engaged more with your brand. So the next one you move them to is somebody who's an engaged like, somebody who comments, somebody who engages more often. Now we're starting to get people more, more deeply enveloped, bad word, in our brand, right? Number four. Four, a super like, somebody who engages more often. Number five, what I call a minor brand advocate, somebody who will recommend your brand on occasion, recommend your product when the time is right. And then you got the last one, which is really the holy grail that we all seek, right, is the super brand advocate. That's somebody who's literally gonna go out there on an almost daily basis and push your company and brand like it is the best thing that they have like the best thing since Kleenex. Oh my God, did you see the Kleenex that I had today? It was perfect and they tweet that, that kind of thing. Um, so then you have two different negative ones. You've got somebody who's a dislike, they get disgruntled with your brand and they go away never to be heard from again. And then you got the real bad one which we all know about and hate, right? That's that super dislike. That's somebody who's gonna go out, go out there and do everything that they can to damage your brand and we all see the trolls, we all see people who are posting negative stuff and just negging on your brand all over, right? Okay, I'll take that as a yes. So the goal is to move people back from seven and eight back into you know, the higher categories of super brand advocate. And you can do that with good, good quality customer service. I'll tell you a story in about two seconds about he here. So how do you find and create Advocates, um, listen, spend more time on your sites. Just throw out a number. How much time do you guys spend on your social media every day? Just feel free to yell it out or not. Two hours? Anybody spend more? More? Anybody spend more than more? <laughs> Any, anybody spend less? You don't count, Joe. You're the video guy. Right? But this is all about listening these days. It's about listening and engaging. You want to be seeing who's retweeting, seeing who's sharing, seeing who's liking, seeing who's commenting, uh, seeing who's tagging, all of that stuff. Those are the opportunities for you to literally go out there and make contact and build a relationship with people. Um, yes, make contact and build relationships. Um, so, brand advocates are everywhere. Here's the story about social customer service. We had somebody, uh, real quick, we had somebody when I was at Fresh Diet who was one of our customers and in the middle of the night we used to deliver food because so it would be ready for them for the next morning. It was in like an ice cooler and stuff like that. They'd pick it up off that doorstep in the morning. This woman, Carol, calls in and, and says that last night one of our drivers was sitting on her lawn drinking beer and throwing the beer bottles on her lawn. Of course, we, I, got on the, I, I got on the phone with her and I 
solved her problem. I told you know, we got rid of the driver, we handled the problem. But the point I'm trying to make is that once you, via social customer service or in-person customer service or on the phone customer service, solve somebody's problem, because let me tell you something, customer service is, it's good customer service these days is not the norm, it's the exception. So once you do that, your opportunity to create that super brand advocate is, is powerful. Carol, for the last five years, has spent $25,000 for her and her husband to literally have, our, have the food delivered. And every single day from the next day after I solved her problem, she takes a picture of her food and she posts it to Facebook. And we just reshare it all over the place. But can you get a better branding experience for somebody coming to check you out? check your company out than your customer who's doing this every day for years. So my point is that if you don't know Donna and you don't know Josh and you don't know Trevor, these are real people by the way, and you don't know Tina, Angel, you're missing an opportunity. If you're not building those relationships, real relationships, you're losing that opportunity. And some of these guys actually, they're friends of mine. I've never met some of them. I've never met Carol, but we communicate back and forth all the time via social. We're, we've become social friends over the years. And I know that's time consuming, but it works and it builds huge advocacy. Um, so, you know, back then, and here's where I'm shifting, right? Back then, when we first started in social, we had the nameless, faceless corporate entity that we wanted to show everybody, like with Fresh Diet, we weren't Nutra Systems, we weren't Jenny Craig. We were a small, regional, scrappy company, and the way to differentiate ourselves was to show who people who we were on a real basis. But now, you have what I call the nameless, face, faceless, corporate social media pusher. My suggestion to you is, do not be an information pusher. Don't be the guy who just goes out there, and I mean guy and girl interchangeably, um, don't be the person that just goes out there and curates content and posts it. Come up with other ways to engage because I see so many people phoning it in, writing, you know, just posting stuff that's awesome, but it's not very engaging. So here's my challenge to you, okay? I want you guys to think about this. I, how many of you guys use tools to post, like Buffer and Clout and Hootsuite and all of that stuff, you know, that whole set it and forget it kind of posting strategy. You come up with great content, it's in the calendar, and you set it up for yes for tomorrow and the next day, and then you go about the rest of your the rest of your day and the rest of your job, right? Wrong. How, how are you going to find the people to engage with and engage with them if you're not there, it's hard. You have to spend more time, literally time, in your social sites. And I do this, and it is time consuming, and I'm sorry to tell you this, but it works. So, and it, it builds relationships. And, and today, believe it or not, social media relationships are dying. It, it's literally, if you watch this like I watch the trends, you'll see the connections are dying, um, engagement is down. It's just really difficult all across the board. Um, so here's a great analogy for you. Every time you use an app to post, instead of going to the actual site, a kitten's going to die. Let you burn this into your memory. All right, never mind. <laughs> no, but God. No, but Yeah, God. <laughs> Yeah. Now you have to pay for it. Is, do you think that's the reason it's not, it's not getting out as much as you No, I think, I think it's a combination of that and people are phoning it in. People are literally, they're using these apps, you know, to set up, set up all their posts and then going, going to do their real job. You know, because social is almost like an adjunct, adjunct of your real do job. It's kind of an afterthought unless you're a dedicated social media manager. And if you're a, a dedicated social media manager or you work for an agency, you got multiple brands you're dealing with, and you're just setting it and forgetting it and going on. 
And I'm, yeah, you'll go to the sites occasionally or daily, but you're not on them, you know? And that's really the key. All right, I'm gonna change this analogy around. Every time you use an app to post rather than that, every time you don't use an app and you go to the site, an angel will get there, a kitten will get their wings. Is that, is that better for you guys? Okay, now that I've manipulated your emotions. Um, so I almost wanted to create, as the 10th law, I almost wanted to create this. Social media success in almost eight out, in eight hours a day. And, I, and it's not realistic, obviously, but the more time, the more you get out of it. You know, it's, you give to get, in, in, just like anything else you do. Um, she's not really happy. She's just putting on a face where her boss is looking. So too many people posting without engaging. People are literally creating this thing called what I call anti-social media marketing. Um, set it and forget it. Doesn't work anymore. So how do you get real? The gift to get is another is one that uh, is is amazing. Contests they're harder to do because you actually have to put like when you're doing it on Facebook, you have to put money into boosting posts and spend money to get to everybody. But contests are super still as a way to get people engaged. They don't not work. Pardon the double negative. Um, freebies. At the Fresh Diet and every other client that I've worked with since then, I encourage them, and not everybody's gonna do it, but the ones who do do it get so much out of it, is to give their product away. How's that for a radical notion? If you, at the Fresh Diet, we started this thing. We literally gave a week's worth of food out for a year and a half, every day for a year and a half. What happened? People got really trusting really engaged in our brand, thought we were the greatest gift in the world. Everybody came to our Facebook page and saw that we, shiny, happy people, losing weight, giant community, everybody playing games, contests, we're giving stuff away. And what do you think happened? Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> Sales went through the roof. We went from a $4 million company to a nearly $30 million company twice on the Inc. 500 list in three years. Less than three years, actually. That's the power of the give to get. Behind the scenes, huge opportunity. Putting, I literally used to walk around, now I do with my phone, with a camera and spot people doing stuff in the company. I find the chef, he's, made, he's all excited about this new dish he made. Okay, tell us about it. Five minutes later, that's up on Facebook, YouTube, all of that stuff. Great ways to engage people. Just bringing the company now and now and now and now right to the audience behind the scenes. Videos, huge opportunity. How many guys are using videos? Do a lot of video marketing? We got one, we got Joe shaking his head. Um, we got somebody in the back, I hope she's tweeting. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, so communicate with people. Again, I can't stress more how, just connecting and communicating with people. Share other content, but share it good, and we'll talk about sharing content in a minute. Connect and build. So advocates are everywhere. This is, I don't know what happened to this slide. It actually, the middle of it dropped out. I apologize. But your advocates are the people who retweet, share, like, comment, all of that stuff. Find them. On the post you put up, look who's got a commonality. If they're commenting a couple of times, they're an engaged liker, stuff like that. Just keep looking, keep them involved. Here's a client of mine called Glasses Shop. Um, every time somebody bought a new pair, of, new pair of glasses, we would literally encourage them to take pictures of themselves and post it. You can't find better ways of getting people engaged, getting people to see who your brand is and, and, and understand what the brand promises you know, from that. Another thing we did, I love this thing. I, I find content that is visually stimulating. This thing is, everybody see this thing moving? Or is it just me? Okay. Um, for a glasses, eyeglass company, that's gonna drive you crazy and get you totally engaged. Tons of shares on that thing. It only says one share on that thing, but once, I, once it reached its, the end of its life, we had you know a lot. Um, this is happiness rules. People posting to your page, again, those are your brand advocates waiting to happen. Here's some contest examples to get people engaged. 
one thing we did at Fresh Diet, we did contests all the time. Here's one that's plate your favorite meal. Take your Fresh Diet meal, sorry to use Fresh Diet. I don't even advocate for them anymore. Haven't worked for them in a couple of years, but they're just such rich examples that I continue to use them. It's just a lousy picture, but these pictures were super high quality, like almost shot like professionally with professional cameras, sent in from our customers. You can't get better advertising than that. If we put a picture up, people wouldn't believe it. But if our customers put up a picture of their food, that's being believed. Um, we created new delivery bags. Sorry, I'm about to eat this microphone. We created new delivery bags. And one way we got people involved is we sent the images of the three different types of bags and we asked people to vote. We got people involved in our brand. Um, Halloween costume contest, this is Amy. Amy um, won, she wasn't on the diet yet, but she wanted to do so bad that she literally built a fresh diet bag and put, entered the contest with the Halloween costume, the Halloween costume contest, and it was just so cute that she won. Um, motivation posts, haven't seen these in a while, but these are due for a comeback. I mean, talk about tug at your heartstrings. If you see that, you're gonna get more engaged in the brand. I mean, we've had hundreds of people submit pictures to us for this contest this motivation poster contest. And this was the winner. And by the way, I want you to know when the bag came back to us, we did wash it. The little, you know. Um, more contest examples. John Lennon's birthday. Take a, uh, take a song by John Lennon or the Beatles and, or even John Lennon solo and fresh dietize it. So half a dozen people took the words imagine and went off on that, imagine there's no diet, imagine there's no bad food, and, and they really kind of made it a song, their own. The winner came up with this Imagine song that was so good, we literally asked him to videotape himself and send it to us, and then we posted it, and that video went viral among our community. It was really good. Um, other content, come on, where are we? We also did a haiku contest. Simple contest, create a haiku about your brand. Anybody out there do that one yet? Try it, it works, it's great as an engagement tool. Um, video contests. This guy, Josh, literally went up to a fast food restaurant and if you watch the video, and if, if you guys want the, the long version of this, the two hour version, there's a link in that version to the actual videos that I'm gonna talk about now because uh, I didn't know I had sound, and usually these events, they don't have sound that you can play videos. This guy pulls up to the drive-thru and says, hi, do you have fresh food? And you know, you hear like, what? You know, and later on in the video, he turns around and says, do you have cheesecake? And they're like, cheesecake, what? Because we had a great cheesecake recipe. Anyway, great ways to get people involved. We had tons of submissions of videos, and people love that stuff. We did a, a recipe contest. Turn your recipe into um, a, f a bad recipe, submit it to us, and we'll turn it into a healthy recipe. So Donna here um, submitted a really bad meatloaf recipe that was like a million calories. And we turned it into something healthy for her. Then we invited her in. Uh, we made her recipe for her at, at our kitchen. We videotaped it. We invited some of her friends. We turned it into a whole big thing, a party with balloons and everything. And can you imagine the play they got when we started posting this stuff and what she started saying about this? She became such a huge brand advocate for us, we eventually hired her to monitor our social media. Um, behind the scenes video, Ray, our chef, we wanted to show how clean our kitchens were. So, and again, map all of this stuff onto your business, please. Uh, we wanted to show our clen the cleanliness in our kitchens, so we, Got a flip camera back then, you know, one of those, whatever, you can do this on an iPhone. You know, just kind of walking around, following the guy as he's talking about the kitchen and talking about his recipes and showing stuff coming out of the oven and being prepped and stuff. And what the subtext was, was look at how spotless this place is. Because the kitchen was like gorgeous and spotless. You see that, you can't really see the stainless steel in the background, but it is perfect. You can eat off it. We created another video. This one cost us literally a thousand bucks. 
undercover boss. We followed our CEO around. We put him in Groucho glasses um, as his disguise. Everybody know who Grou what Groucho glasses are? Okay, good. Um, now, sometimes I talk to older audiences and they remember these things and the younger ones don't necessarily. Um, but, and we followed him around. The thing is he, ha he had dark glasses, a mustache, and a big nose. So you put the thing on, he looked exactly the same. So we had this 10 minute video we created that we unleashed on our social communities and they ate it up. They j just loved it. And it, it helped to brand our business, brand our company, brand the people within the business because we had our customer service manager in the scene, we had our head chef in the scene, we had me um, in, in there and everything as the marketing guy and also the MC on social media. It all kind of helped form the positioning of our brand via social. So let me switch gears for a second. Let's talk about content and how we cross-pollinate our content. This is just one model that I'm just gonna bring out there, but there's lots of different ways to do this. This is kind of a hub and spoke model, and if you take a look at these, you know, all these green dots, spokes here, that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, whatever, what have you, Vine, YouTube. Create the content, start it from the blog, and then amplify your message all to all of these other channels. How many of you guys are doing that? Okay, good. Um, here's a new way to think about this thing. Forget your ABCs. ABP is the new marketing motto. Always be promoting. Okay? I walked into our call center. We had been slammed one time for weeks and our customer service reps were dying after being on the phone. We finally got a lull, and what do I find? I find half a dozen of them doing the electric slide. So what do I do? Good thing I had my camera. I pulled my camera out, I videoed them for a couple of minutes doing this thing, and posted it. What do you think happened with our customers? They loved it. It shows the real behind the, you know, the, in the company. Time for a video break. Hold on. When I say three, this is, a, this is always under the concept of always be promoting. When I say three, say you, hi Jim, you, hey Jim, you rock, okay? On three, and I'll just videotape you guys, and I'll post it to my uh, Twitter. Everybody huddle together so it looks like there's more people in the room. That's perfect. Okay, one, two, three. Hey Jim, you rock. So that will be on ABC tonight. <laughs> uh, but again, the concept is look for opportunities. Always be promoting. Always find things that can connect the consumer with the brand and do it in a positive way. Um, switching gears again about using your real voice. Uh, wrap yourself. If you don't have your own content, if you don't want to write your own content, here's a great way to do things. Wrap yourself around somebody else's content or an issue. I told you, I like drama. I, I wrote an article, um, this is from my, my blog, Facebook, marketing's greedy, petulant child. When they started to convert everything to paid advertising, I just railed against them for months. Railed, couldn't stand it, pissed me off kept telling people, would somebody please sue them? We own the fans. He doesn't, but of course he really does own the fans, and we just kind of borrow them. Even though there are, we worked so hard to build our fan base via social, and he took it away from us, forced us to pay. So I got pissed, and I got a lot of people patting me on the back and fighting with me. So it was a great way to be controversial. I like to provoke. Um, Share other people's content and add your opinion. Make it your own. Be a curator of content, but then put your spin on it. Don't just pass content along as in being an info pusher. Become a thought leader. How many of you guys want to be thought leaders? I asked this question before. How many of you guys don't want to be thought leaders? You don't want to be a thought leader. You're just like, okay, it's too much work. Uh, how many of you guys are using LinkedIn publishing and posting? 
and putting up blogs? One? How often? Good. Groups are killer for that. What is? LinkedIn groups. You can join up, each person can join up to 50 LinkedIn groups and they just amplify that content all across all of those groups. Um, LinkedIn publishing, I've got about, in the first year it was out, so a year and a half ago, I published 60 articles. And I got anywhere from 100 views to 10,000 views. Of course, the more controversial, the more views I got. So keep that under your hat. Um, and then, like I said, amplify that content via um, you know, uh, groups. I own uh, actually three different LinkedIn groups and two different Facebook groups. And I use them as my own personal platform for pushing out information and engaging with people. Um, but I also encourage you guys to find, you know, groups that, like we were talking earlier about how that before I, we actually started talking, we were talking about the earlier presentation, and I asked the question, well, how many of you guys in the beer industry are finding people who are in the service industry and bartenders in LinkedIn and Facebook groups and talking to them? And they were like, uh, well, uh, you know, what a great way to get your brand out in front of bartenders who's, you know, your influencer market. Um, tweet to become a thought leader. How many guys are active on Twitter? Actually talking to people on Twitter, not just posting stuff. Great opportunity there. Lots of ways to, I've made so many new friends and gotten into events and stuff like that and built my following that way. Um, blog, vlog, everything. Just get your content out there. This is my, some of my posts. Um, this is an old slide, so I'm just going to blow past that from LinkedIn Publisher. Uh, the Mark Zuckerberg one actually went from 5,200 to uh, um, 10,000. Uh, and I was pissed off on his birthday when he became 30. And I basically said, don't trust anybody named Mark Zuckerberg over 30, um, which is an old line from, by don't trust anybody over 30 from the 60s. Now, I'm not that old. I was born in the 60s, so I just want to let you guys know that I'm not that old. Um, sorry. Same group. Uh, here's my LinkedIn group, Direct Marketing Questions and Answers. Lots of engaged people there. Lots of people submit spam, so you've got to watch it and manage it actively. Same thing. Created one on Facebook. You guys find what you guys do and create groups. And they work really well to draw people in. Um, more ideas for you. Obviously, B2B social is all about blogging and LinkedIn. We talked about that. I won't talk more about that. Becoming a thought later, kind of a recap. Always be promoting. Look for those promotional opportunities. Uh, amplify your message across all platforms and share it. Don't just post it here and let it sit. Figure out ways to recreate that same message in all of the different channels. Um, Create share-worthy content. Don't just be an info pusher. Um, how are we doing on time? It's 521 at nine minutes. Everybody still good? All right, cool. I'll try to wrap this up in like five minutes and give you guys a few minutes to ask me questions. Um, I love fun and humor. This is another one of my clients, Mega Motor Madness, former client. Um, you know, putting the guy on that, that thing and putting it out there. It's just a great way to get people to comment and share. People love to share really funny things. Have you noticed that they share funny things on Facebook? Have you? Have you? Okay. Uh, same thing with the cockpit on the side of the motorcycle. And they were all perfect within the brand because Mega Motor Madness made their manufacture of motorcycles, ATVs, stuff like that. So it's a good fit. Um, some other good tips. You guys using hashtags even on when you're posting Facebook posts? Um, of course, when you're doing it on Twitter, it's important. Uh, Instagram, another great place for hashtags. Um, pictures and graphics, huge opportunity. When you post something, don't just post text, even if it's Twitter. Like I, I tweeted out a picture of, you know, a, a selfie of me in front of the, nine, the title of this thing before, and about three people actually um, liked it. Uh, so pictures and graphics are a must. 
Video, I, I could talk all day about using video to engage, but I won't because I only have a few more minutes. Um, create events. How many of you guys create an event around your business, a sale, and then create a Facebook, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A, a Facebook event, sorry, uh, around it and invite people to the event and then promote the event. It's a great way to get people involved. Same thing with Google Plus. You guys still using Google Plus out there? It, it, it doesn't hurt because it still sends social signals to Google. So don't ignore it for now. It's almost dead, but don't, don't completely ignore it. Um, a create a webinar, a call-in, anything that is good for your business. Somebody, uh, the copywriter, where's the copywriter? You're the copywriter, sorry. Create a, a webinar on you know, the best headlines to use in your copy or how to use heads and subheads effectively. You know, how to not bore the reader to death when you're writing copy by you know, using ellipses and all of that stuff. Create a webinar about that and then promote it all over. Great opportunities for you. Again, LinkedIn publishing, great key. Tagging people, this is one of my clients. I love these guys. They, they learn and they do everything the best. They do one thing and one thing really well. They make granola. Now that's a hard thing to sell, just granola. But every time they go out and they do an event, on the right I think it's Whole Foods, uh, on the left they went to the New York restaurant show, notice that they uh, actually tagged people right up there, uh, the New York restaurant show to amplify that message. They're talking about non-GMO, all of these things are tagged, people are tagged. Here Whole Foods Market, they were in Naples, Florida, Whole Foods. They tag them to amplify the message and get that out there. Some hashtags in there, happy, thankful. Uh, all of those things help get that content to more and more people. So they're doing a really great job. So I'm going to finish up here real quick. The days, of, and just say, you know, the days of that big anonymous corporation are over. I kind of started there because that's how social kind of started, is putting the, the face on a nameless, faceless entity. But it's important to really you know, note that it's, it's still, you're missing an opportunity if you're not branding the people in your company. Like this is Debbie. Debbie is the former sales manager over at Fresh Diet. People used to know what her kids' names were, what sports they played, all of that stuff. So it was really like the human element. And the last slide is, this is the owner of Fresh Diet. And this was actually a contest submission I hate to finish on this guy because he's not the guy who you think he is from these pictures. Somebody took the Z, the S from Superman, turned it around, his name is Zalmi, and created Superman. Because we created this brand where he was giving away food, running these contests, I was doing it, but he was you know, the guy who owned the company, so he was this you know, benevolent, easily accessible, great guy, because he would come and he would play with us and he would post stuff along with, and we made this guy into something that essentially who he wasn't, who he wasn't, but you know, good branding tells a story about who people are and sometimes aren't. Uh, I'm, I'm sure the guy from Purdue Farms, the chicken guy, wasn't this nice guy who loved chicken. He's a business guy, right? Anyway, so that's where I'm closing uh, here. Again, um, you know, here's my email address. I have business cards with me. Feel free to follow me and tweet to me at Gilbert Direct. My phone number, if you want to take that down, if you want to have any questions after the questions, if you want to ask private questions. Uh, Jim at GilbertDirectMarketing.com is my email address. And if you give me your business cards, I'll send you the full two-hour deal of the original Nine Immutable Laws. So with that, I thank you for listening, and I'll ask if there's any questions before I pass out. Questions? No? Joe, ask a question. Make me feel good. So, so when, when you're doing the uh, LinkedIn post, mm -hmm. I think that's kind of you know, pretty relevant. Ta talk about the, um, the group, not the group, the publisher that you set up. Because it's not, it's not like easily understood understanding in LinkedIn how you create that. Uh, you don't just retweet your blog post. You do more. No, I, I, so I create original content for there sometimes, and then sometimes since I write for you know, the Target Marketing Magazine, I take my stuff and I change about 20% of the copy 
so um, Google doesn't, you know, ding me and say it's the same stuff and suppress them and so they don't get the SEO value. Um, LinkedIn is a great place for SEO. Google picks up on it like crazy. So how to start with LinkedIn Publisher, just to kind of get to the first part of that question. If you go to your profile and you go on your page and it says post a status update or whatever it says, I, I forget the actual word it says, post something, you'll see a little pencil icon. You guys know, ever, you see the pencil icon? If you click on the pencil, it gives you an opportunity to not just post a status, but a full length blog article. Now, back when I signed up for it, you had to submit articles um, and they, there was a, a physical process where they had to approve you, but I think now it's open to just about everybody. So if you have the little pencil icon, click on it, and it, it pretty much brings up, you know, like a WordPress blog kind of page setup where you can just, you can put articles, everything you want. I even have presentations, I've put video in there from YouTube, all of that stuff, and you can just post anything you want. And there's, I don't think there's a length um, it's, it's exactly what it is, is it's just, it's just another way, you know, I used to go back and forth and, and say to myself, okay, do I want to post this on my personal blog, on my column, or on LinkedIn? Because each one is a completely different audience. So eventually I turned around and through trial and error, I just created different, the same concept like the Mark Zuckerberg thing I showed you guys, ran in three different places with slightly tweaked content in all three of those places to maximize the amount of views uh, that I got and shares and comments that I got. How much of that content did you read? I read a lot. Um, you know, sometimes I'll take it at, at other people's content and I'll put my own spin on it like I was saying earlier, but I, I love to write. Um, last six months I haven't written as much as I did the last, the previous year, but it's just a, writing to me is, I'm a, I'm a frustrated novelist, so, and a frustrated comedian as you could probably tell. Um, frustrated drummer too if anybody wants to know. Um, but it, writing is just fun for me, so I like coming up with stuff. And I, as a marketer I love numbers, so you know, when you post something to LinkedIn and you get to see how many comments, how many shares, you, and, and you know, how many likes and stuff like that, it becomes a game. You're literally, after a while, you're just trying to post stuff to see what gets the most amount of, you know, comments and stuff. And then once you realize that, because after I did the Zuckerberg thing and got 10,000, 15,000, I think was the max I got on one of them, and I realized it was kind of unfocused like the people who are commenting from all over the world and all over the business world, they weren't really my target market, people who can buy my services. So then I started narrowing it down again and even if I get 100 or 200 views on my posts, at least I know because I'm speaking more about marketing that I know that people are going to be reading it who can eventually use my services. So there's that kind of game, you, you really want the wide net but you really want a, the narrow audience. And, and last, last my question I have, on, on, face, on LinkedIn, the paid portion of it, do you use it? Do you I've tried it, haven't it? been able to make it work. It's very expensive. Um, it is expensive. Oh, it you is. Mean, wait, you mean advertising or you mean the paid membership? The paid post and the paid, uh, you know, if you do there's a premium sponsored you, posts and stuff. Yeah. You I'm can sponsor sure. posts. It's so expensive compared uh, to other channels. Yeah, you know, we tried it and the engagement level was relatively low. Mm -hmm. I run an organization, the Florida Direct Marketing Association, so we tried some of we tried some of those posts and sponsored them and paid and we saw a couple of people engaged there, but we didn't see a huge amount. That that doesn't mean that I won't revisit it eventually. But for right now, it's kind of off my plate because there's so many other things to do. My, my I saw it was expensive um, for what it was, but you did get a lot of views and you didn't get a lot of uh, follows, so to speak. But Bottom line is test. You know, as marketers and me coming out of the direct marketing business, it's all about testing. You know, you test it, you try some different copy approaches and some different offers, 
And if it works, it works. Continue playing, and if it doesn't work, then scrap it and try something new. Nothing's that much different from the old games. No, I mean, honestly, I, I, everything I do that's considered digital these days is just stuff that was being done before my time from the whole infomercial and mail order business. You know, it just, it's all the same. It's just we use different words for it now. I wrote a great article about I took all of the new the newfangled words that they have that digital marketers have created to define and differentiate themselves, and I basically mapped them back to what we were doing 20, 30 years ago, and said, "Well, this is this, but it really came from here." So anyway, that that's that's my story. Again, I thank you. Any last questions? No yeah. So I'll pay you twenty dollars later for this one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to try to figure out how to frame this so that it's not really um, Something that uh, I've run into sometimes with managing clients' accounts is that um, for, like for example, there's one client that is a um, an online portal to connect local trans physicians and healthcare organizations and agencies. Um, Kind of like a, VM, a modified VMS, if you know what that is. Um, no, but I know a guy who did it in Florida. <laughs> so, Not the VMS thing. Like, um, I know a guy who did connected, you know, those two Yeah, years. so this is basically just a platform for agencies and, and healthcare organizations to be able to kind of come together. Mm -hmm. So the, the problem that I run into sometimes with those kind of clients is that they don't have the time or the knowledge to, to do their own social media, which is why they hire someone. But they're B2B, and I really feel like they need to be in they need to be in LinkedIn groups. That's where they need to be to really sure. connect with people. And that's not something that I, you know, I can log in their, in their account, but I don't have that knowledge that really to have those good conversations. Not that, I mean, I can have fluff conversations where I kind of sound like I know I'm talking about it to somebody else, but not good relationship building conversations. So, that's a real challenge that we run into is that those people are hiring us because they don't have the time and the knowledge to do it. And I can't necessarily go back to them and say, well, thanks for paying me, so now you need to do it uh, mm -hmm. while you still pay me for telling you to do it. Like, that doesn't, there, there's always a challenge there. You know, every time I speak, I get asked the same question from somebody in an agency. And there's, there's really no hard and fast answer to that. You, you can, you. They could, I think that's a problem. Is I'm not relaying the value to them while I'm not. I'd have to do my own now. <laughs> no, I, th I think that your question is good. Yeah. No, I, I, I will attempt to answer it. I, I wasn't, I literally wasn't saying there's no hard and fast answer, meaning I'm not going to say anything about it. But, you know, the, the truth of the matter is there's a lot of different ways to go about it, is try to get the company more engaged in what you're doing and send you stuff and guide you, give you bullet points. And I know that's extremely difficult because I do what you do. The other thing you can do, and I know this one hurts because it's, you know, how to do social media success in eight hours a day, is do a deep dive into the company. Learn everything you can. Just feed on whatever information you can get out of them. And, uh, you know, as a, as a marketing consultant and, and agency owner, I, I literally have to become a member of these companies in some ways in order to do my job. And I'm not just talking social, yeah, definitely for social and content and stuff like that. But I gotta get into the heads of, the, of the, their customers. So unfortunately, it just creates more work because you, you really have to think like them and become one of them almost. Unf I, yeah. And, and you're always, you're always going to run into companies that are going to be resistant. They're not going to give you what you need, and you're not going to be able to find a way to get it. And, you know, they may be paying you, but I suggest that the relationships may not last because they, if they value you as an agency, they need to give you the food you need to be nourished in order to do your job successfully for them. Yeah, that's challenging. I think part sure. of that was definitely... As I was saying it out loud, I think part of it is not not relaying the value well enough to them that they would get from being actively engaged on their own. Well, as part of as part of the whole thing, but them actually getting involved in uh, 
in those groups personally? Because it's a really small company. Um, yeah, lots of times they don't have the budget. One salesperson for the whole country, like they're, so they're customers they know. You know, it could just be one of those deals where you ask for forgiveness instead of permission. I mean, I hate to say it like that, but I've done that a million times. Like, I'll start a new channel for a client. I'll say, oh, guess what? You got X number of, you know, likes. And they're like, what? Oh, yeah, your video went viral. Huh? <laughs> what video? Oh, yeah, I, was, I videotaped a couple of guys in the call center. And they're like, really? Sometimes you got to drag these guys kicking and screaming into the 21st century. Um, and you could lose a client or so, but...